Hello everyone and welcome by another video and this is probably my most important one if you ask me because today I'm going to talk about, like the title suggests, how I grow my orchids and uh, how I uh, personal, personalized my, uh, the self-watering system to something that works for me and um, yeah I think it works for my orchids as well. So this is the basis for getting all the blooms and how I yeah, grow my orchids. And like I said, this is, uh, this is everything here, does start everything with, of course. To get nice blooms, you, we need healthy orchids and happy orchids. And that is how we uh, do get beautiful new growth, like, uh, like on this uh, Leodoro, with this one has five spikes on it, sadly, uh, one is blooming well actually it's, it's, it's I'm happy with that bloom of course but I was hoping for a little bit more but um, yeah to get all those blooms and how I uh, yeah how, how I do that uh, I'm gonna talk about the, this uh, today finally I wanted to do this uh, uh, for a long long time probably the uh, for me the most important video uh, because uh, like I said it's all about uh, what is going on in the pots of these beautiful orchids so let's talk about my system. So I chose three uh, volunteers for the day. Um, oh, I'm sorry, this one could go in the back. We need that in a minute, but not now yet. I just uh, chose uh, three different um, uh, yeah, genera of orchids. We have a Phenoliopsis on the left and a Miltoniopsis in the middle, as you uh, already noticed, I think, and a Cattleya type on the right. I was not very in interested for this particular video uh, about the plant plants itself, but more to show um, yeah, different medias that I like to use. I have one in Ceramus, but I don't like Ceramus, so I didn't include Ceramus in this one, this video. But I uh, use uh, sometimes only Lekka, Sometimes a mixture. Here I have a Lekka and Sintic. That is the black stuff that you see here. And also pumice. And in this case it's a little mixture with Lekka and pumice. But in these days I also um, use only pumice for, for example, for my Phenoliopsis, the bigger uh, pumice species. So depending on the size of the roots, I chose, uh, choose my media. This one has small roots, this one has, has thicker roots. This one has also thicker roots, so therefore I have bigger media for both those two and smaller media for this one. If I use bigger media, I try to fill it up with Syntec to get the same effect when I would use a small pumice, for example. Okay, so that is uh, the first uh, thing that um, I would like to know uh, to notice. Um, what we have how I uh, have built up my self-watering system. It's not very uh, difficult, it's just a outer pot. Um, it's not this one, but these days I like to uh, use the uh, Alo brand, the Brussel, I think it's called. doesn't matter that much, as long as it's uh, uh, water resistant, I think, you call it. So if you can get water in it and it will not get out, you, that is a pot that you can use, in my opinion. Uh, it needs to be uh, quite clean. I like the plastic, it's easy to clean. So what I do is uh, I create a reservoir uh, with very clean water. No, but I will uh, get to that in a minute. And I can now, let's demonstrate this, put the arcades, and it's, this is the part of the uh, fennel neopsis. Let me see if I'm in. Focus. I just put the arcade in here. Uh, it has an aerial root there that needs to go out outside of the pot. And then I put it in, and you see that water meter. This one is very, very handy. In um, just a blink of an eye, I can see if my arcade needs water or if it uh, has water enough. Like this, it's hanging, so therefore this one has uh, water enough but it was if it was like this it could have a little bit more water so that's one thing just a tip i personally like uh, like really like these things yeah i'm calling them water meters i 
buy them in bulk, you can find them on Amazon or whatever. But um, yeah, it's really handy, and that's why you see them all in my pots with my orchids. So, this is a little bit the system. You saw I have water in here, so we have a reservoir. I put a orchid in it with a inner pot, so we have an outer pot and an inner pot. Put it in there, and I have a water meter, so I know what is going on here water-wise. I only know if there is water in or not. That's basically it, and how much... Uh, water is in there. That's all. But it's this is the basic of the system that I uh, that I like um, to use. But as you may know, with semi hydroponics or with um, self watering, uh, in most channels, probably all that I uh, I know is that, that they talk about flush flushing flushing the pots or soaking the pots and then flushing them. That's the basic of the system. You need to get it going, get it, keep it clean, or at least as clean as you can. Because if you don't do that, you will have uh, salt built up in your pot. And it also um, gets the air in and out of the pot. So refreshing the air by putting a lot of water in, get the water out. The air gaps will be filled with water and then will be filled with clean air again. Because there need to be something. So if the water gets out, and if there is no media, like in this particular part, we will have an air gap. Some uh, roots, like Cattleya roots, Phenoliopsis roots, do like those air gaps. Miltoniopsis do not like them um, that much. Just a little bit, not too much. But anyhow, so, uh, flushing. Well, to be honest, uh, that is where my system did change. Because I not really uh, like flushing for uh, basically two reasons. First of all, I'm just being honest, I have 260, 65, somewhere there, orchids in self-watering. I have a few more orchids like my Venus. I don't have them in self-watering, but most of my orchids I have in self-watering. So you can imagine the time it would, would cost me to flush these orchids on a regular basis. So let's say every two weeks. Too much time for me. I, I really do not have the time to do that. Um, if I really, really needed that uh, to do, to get uh, successful with this system, I probably could have 30 or 40 orchids. That's okay, but I have greenhouse, I have the space, I like buying orchids, <laughs> so therefore I keep buying them and I like just to have a um, nice collection, I think. So therefore, I sh that's one of the reasons why I don't like flushing. The other reason is, it's kind of hard to explain. It's just a feeling. It's just my my experience, my thoughts on it. I'm not saying it is. I'm, I'm I really basically do not t know what I'm talking about. I only can talk about my experience and my thoughts. So that's that's the basis of this video. Don't keep that in mind. It's very important. Um, but um, and I'm growing like this for two years now, two and a half years. So I have some experience now, I think, and that's why I'm sharing it. Um, um, just to have some uh, thoughts on the subject. But okay, so I don't like flushing. The other thing that I do not like, or it's just that, that feeling inside of me, is if I would flush, let's say even a few times per week, that would be even better, like the experts say, to keep that uh, air movement, to keep the pots clean, etc. I think there will be a point where we maybe are too clean with our orchids. It's just a thinking process once again, because we have we do not only have ba bad bacteria, we also have good bacteria. What happens with those if I keep flushing and flushing and flushing? I know in nature most of these guys do grow on trees. So if they are um, attached to a branch, it rains and the rains will go, go down the roots and will not stay there. I know that. But I also know that I'm growing in a greenhouse. The climate here is way different than where these would normally go in nature, right? So therefore I try to find something that is quite similar. Um, standing in water is not similar, I know that. but having the amount of bacteria, I'm not completely sure, because I do not really know what happens in nature. So, I think, if you see, um, 
where they come from, like there are some animals who leave their uh, feces behind, which is basically a feed for the argot. Yeah, you can. Uh, we could uh, speculate uh, about uh, how clean that is, you, if you know what I mean. So, I think you um, know now where I'm getting at. How clean is clean, etc. It's. It, I don't know. I don't have the answers, but I think uh, I'm very interested. Let me put it like that. In a little small bioclimate in my pot, if that makes sense. It's just a thinking process, but I think that we can do that. I'm not sure, but I'm working on it for um, very intensely for at least a year. There f before that, uh, one year, one and a half year, I just grew as the expert said. Then I stopped doing it. So for a year now, I uh, kept my notes, and we will talk about my notes in a second. But um, And I do this now for a year. And there were some things that did um, that I did I know that I noticed, which are very important, and um, so I thought I'm going to share that. But um, um, I will do that now. But first of all, so that I don't like the flush, and keep that in mind. If when when is the pot too clean? If you know what I mean, so, something um, similar like using hydrogen peroxide. I use it when I have new plants because I don't know what what's on the roots. Once they are in my growing uh, area, once I know the plant, this one I have for two, probably three years now, if I do a repot on it, I will not use hydrogen peroxide. It's not needed. I know this plant, I know that this part of the plant is not doing very well, but as you can see, it's getting there again. It's also blooming for the first time. It has two blooms, so we have beautiful roots. It's a healthy plant, so I do not need uh, hydrogen peroxide again. Also, because I will spray, uh, the good bacteria will go dead as well because of the hydrogen. So therefore, we do uh, hear that quite often on channels as well. I hope this makes sense. It's kind of hard to explain, but I kind of referring to um, that microclimate in here. Okay, first thing that I noticed when I start trying this out no flushing, leaving the plants in, was that in about, yeah, generally speaking, about um, six months, my pH didn't raise. As you all prob probably always hear when people use LECA, Sintec, pumice, that the pHs do raise for your water. Um, they can raise quite heavily. Some LECA brands do all go to the uh, 9.0 or something pH, it's way too high for orchids. But yeah, so normally, in the beginning at least, it's, it raises the pH. It's depending on the media, but all medias that I use do, uh, uh, yeah, do show an increase on the pH. After six months, generally speaking, depending, uh, yeah, it's generally speaking, it may differ a little bit in orchid, um, my pH pHs did start to drop, so they did raise a few months, I didn't flush, I didn't flush, I just fed them, kept an eye on them, and then whoa, boom, <laughs> and really, really rapidly, the pH started to go downwards, and I'm talking about 3.9 was the lowest that I measured, 3.9 pH for an orchid is um, a good way to kill them. Within a day, if you are not in time, yeah, probably within a day your roots will be gone and the orchid will go downwards quite quickly. So I had this happen with this one, that's why this part is not looking so well. But I have it going again, so I changed something, obviously. Did I start flushing more? No, because I still not like flushing. And I still want to that bioclimate. So there was something different that I introduced into this setup. I never saw it before, so I was very uh, yeah, curious to know if it would work, and also very nervous, but I did it, and um, I thought I'd just give it a go, and we will see. So let me grab that product I'm talking about. 
And here it is. This is my lifesaver. It's uh, in Dutch. I uh, keep it. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I buy it at Jörg Deelhoven. It's a seller from the Netherlands. It also has. Oh, I'm sorry. My car camera did go <laughs> its own way. Um, but it's a uh, orchid grower, and they have a special garden you can visit. Um, but they also have a selling area where I like to go f to buy some orchids. Um, Sometimes, um, but they, they sell this as a um, it's a shark fertilizer they say, but it's basically it's just a shark. It's not really a fertilizer, I think, but it's the uh, do I think it's uh, the dolmite, dolmite, shark dolmite. It's the gray version. I heard uh, Rick Els talk about it, and also Todd from Todd's Orchids. They have the um, Gordon Lime. Which uh, that brand I cannot get here, but I have this stuff. It, it, it's basically the same. It's uh, um, calcium with magnesium, if I'm correct. It's not it does, doesn't say on the package, but I did uh, look it up, and you can see if it's if it's shock and it is grayish. It is a um, mixture of uh, calcium and magnesium in most cases but I did check it and it was right and especially with orchids and it says it is uh, for orchids intended so it's, uh, it's safe to use normally you use this to um, for example to get your bark going for longer you spray it, uh, this on top and the pH will not go down as quickly and most times you will uh, only use um, a, a pinch of it on your pots and it will be uh, last you about four to six months if I'm correct on top of my head I'm not completely sure it doesn't matter that much I use it com no, not completely but quite different but because I saw it, saw it on uh, Rick Els and also on Todd's orchids and they have beautiful uh, beautiful orchids they are really uh, in my opinion, respectful growers. Yes, sadly, uh, Rick L uh, is stopped growing. Um, but um, yeah, I really do respect both of them, and um, I really love the, um, the information that they share. But when when I saw it on their channels, I, I thought, well, this is maybe something that I can use. It's not intended to use in self-watering. So therefore I was a little bit nervous to use it, but I needed something that was A, okay for my orchids, so no uh, root tip dieback, etc. They love the calcium, they love the magnesium, so that's a plus. And also I need, needed something that kept the pH um, higher than um, I had in a few months in my reservoir, like I talked about earlier. I uh, did use some other projects, but those were um, didn't work in, in about a week or two weeks. So I needed something that would last me way longer, because otherwise I didn't, it didn't, didn't give me anything. I needed to keep flushing them again on a regular basis. So I needed a product that could last for uh, at least a few weeks. And I hoped for a few months, but at least a few weeks. So I, started, I thought, why not? I'm going to try this. And this is working for me. It's perfect. It is perfect. It does exactly what I hoped it would do. So I um, give them a little amount directly in the reservoir, not in a pot. So I'm, use it, I'm using this different than um, they uh, said on the label. But I just grab a little bit. I just about this um, no, a, little, a little less, I think. Just a fourth amount of this uh, this scoop I think just a little bit I hope you can see it just a little bit I put it in that reservoir what happens then is that it raises the pH and it stays there for uh, at least three months so three months we have a good pH in a pot so let now let me talk about um, I'm gonna leave this on the table I'm gonna the orchids back and I'm gonna get my notes because now we're going, uh, going further into this uh, setup and I need my notes for uh, more explaining I think so and I'm back with my notes here 
and um, yeah, I keep uh, notes of uh, all, all my orchids by genre, and I just uh, did get my uh, sheet of uh, the dendrobiums, and I want to have a look at the number three, the per Pereshii, if I pronounce it <laughs> correctly. I should have chosen another one with a bit easier name for me, but um, what I do is I have I um, yeah. Let me zoom out for a second. I will zoom in again slowly. I have this sheet. I have the names on the left. I will start with the date, the date of the measurement, and then I will fill it in like this. I go downwards. I fill in the the pH that I measured, and most of the times the ppm's. In parts per million. Not always, but I start to do it always now because it gives me extra information as well. But sometimes um, you do not always see the PPMs here. But yeah, in general, and uh, especially now on my newer form, for, forms, I um, include the PPMs as well, just out of curiosity. Um, but uh, yeah, let's zoom in again and let's have a look at the uh, number three per SCI. Dendrobium peresii. So, um, oh, this is kind of hard. I measured this the last. No, I'm sorry. I need to go to this one. This was at the 10th of January. 10 uh, and then a one. We do it the other way around here in the Netherlands. But uh, the 10th of January, I measured a pH of 5.4 and 65 parts per million. 5.4. Um, it's a bit too low for my liking. I like to um, recreate the system as you start out. By that I mean, what, like I talked about, if you start with fresh media, doesn't matter uh, uh, which one, but in all of those inorganic medias have a tendency to rise up the pH a little bit. But the orchids start to grow, so they don't do mind that higher pH that much, and a higher pH in this case is around 7, 7.5. I don't uh, like to go above 7.5. So what I try to do with uh, recreating that system, because I know it's kind of safe, because uh, like I said, they start growing roots in a higher pH, uh, I'm putting in a, a little bit of calcium. Um, and uh, get that pH up a little bit. So that is what I did here at the 10th of January. But I did use it quite a little bit and I can see that because on the 30th of January I had a pH of 6.2 and a uh, ppm of uh, 43. So the pH was better, it was okay. I like to uh, keep it in a range of um, yeah, between 6 and 7. I uh, most of the times uh, have my uh, water pH, if I water my orchids, around 5.8 and 6.2, somewhere in between. So this one is safe for me. And um, just a second, I need to move this a little bit. Oops. I'm sorry, I couldn't read it because there's something in my screen. Yeah, now I can read it again. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's hard. My camera has these little things in the screen, options, and those are a little bit in the way. <laughs> but I can, now I have a clear vision. So we were here, 6.2 pH, 43 uh, parts per million, and there is a, a B and a C. That's a, a little bit of calcium. So I n know that I at this, when I measured this, I did put in a little bit of calcium again. And uh, a little bit more this time because I had a little uh, too, too, too little the last time because the pH wasn't as high as I liked it to be. And then I put in a little bit more and I measured it again at the 18th of March. So uh, let's say two and a half months later, if I'm if I'm correct. No, one and a half. I'm sorry, one and a half months later. Um, and then it was around 7.3 and 2, but I, I keep rounding at, at uh, 7.3, uh, I'm sorry. So the pH was higher. That is high enough. I don't go higher than this. But now if I'm a little bit above 7, I now know that I can, um, I have enough 
of the calcium in for at least three months. I know that because I did a lot of uh, experience with all my orchids this way, I just uh, give this one as an example, I have way more and now I know that after three months I generally need to um, measure again and I think I could get away with some for uh, four months or even five months but I uh, like to know what's going on in the pot so therefore I just keep uh, that time um, time limit I don't know how to call it uh, exactly but I uh, like to measure them every three months and um, if I think there's something off with an orchid I measure it again obviously but in general speaking I now measure it every three months and most of the times if I do that it will be around six so that's uh, in time I don't want to go down six or at least um, go as low as 5.4 5.5 is the limit uh, everything below that it's not doesn't make the orchids quite happy in my experience so this is a little bit of uh, how I take my notes and I thought it, it was nice to do another ex um, example I now have the uh, list of the Miltonias as you can see I did quite a lot of writing down stuff <laughs> um, well if we have a closer up at the Ragnellii it's a big plant um, you know, let me show the plant first maybe uh, a little bit more obvious then yeah, I have the fans running, sorry for the noise, but this is the Ragnellia, it's, it's really it, probably my biggest plant, it has a lot of new growths on it, it's starting to make flower spikes, so there's a lot of going on there, but as you can see it's a, it's a big plant. And I showed you that plant because I also noticed that the bigger plants are the ones who are really in the growing modus, are, um, have a, a quicker lower pH than the other ones, so there's something that they take out of the feed and something probably they leave behind that is um, responsible for a lower pH. I'm not sure what it is I don't know if I ever will find out but it doesn't matter that much as long as I stay on top of that pH and those ppm but the pH is the first one it's the most important one if you grow like me in this um, customized uh, self-watering setup the Ragnelli, I, I um, yeah, let's grab this one. It was on the 31 of January, it was at 506 pH for my once again way too low. It had only 51 parts per million. And in winter time, I like to feed at a um, 50 to 80 parts per million per watering. As soon as we go, the weather starts to get better, I like to go at 100 and 150 for uh, most of my orchids. So this one was quite low. It's a big plant, so it makes sense that this one is a little bit lower PPM-wise. And also PPH, uh, sorry, <laughs> pH-wise. So I did give this calcium. It uh, doesn't say BC, but only a C. That means it gets calcium and it's a bigger amount. I have a BC here, that means it's a little amount. And a, only a C means for me a big amount. That's, for me, I know uh, what that means. And it's handy, because I did measure this at uh, the 6th of April again. And I still had a uh, pH of 7.3. So that was a good pH. Um, why it didn't change much, I don't know. I was expecting a bigger change, but it's not always uh, like that. But sometimes it happens. Probably in that um, in that first period or the period, period between these two measurements, maybe the orchid didn't do much um, growing then. Uh, it now has quite a lot of uh, new growth, so now I probably, if if I fill this in again, so after three months, I think the pH will be uh, way lower than now. But um, I know that it wasn't way higher, because I uh, keep measuring them, uh, especially in the beginning when I put the calcium in, the day after I did me measure them again, just to know that I didn't put too much calcium in. I don't want a pH of 8 or 9 or even higher. So now I know how much I uh, normally need to put in if I put quite a lot in. And this amount, oh, let me show it now one more time. This amount 
is a lot. Hmm? It's more than enough. So if I'm at a pH at 5, let's say I measured my uh, an argot and had pH 5 or even lower, I will put this in and I'm uh, at least good for 3 months and it will have a pH around 7, generally speaking. But this is a, a bit of the system. Uh, let me see if we have more. We have the dendrobiums. Let's have a look at the cattleyas. They all have their own forms and their own names on this. <laughs> um, well, the rin, rin cat green number five I have here. It had a pH at 5.9 at the 17th of December. I did give it a little bit of um, calcium. This stuff again. A little bit, so it had a pH in the last of January. I was measured a little bit often, more often there because I didn't know how much calcium I needed to use back then. It had a pH at 6.7, so I did give it a little bit more calcium. I didn't uh, go over the 7. I like to go a little bit over 7 pH, like I said, between 7 and 7.5. So I give it a little bit more. But then again, it had 6.2, and then we were in March. So this one was growing. That means that it did take more of that calcium and that magnesium, and it did take up uh, that calcium, which results in a, a lower pH at this time. So that tells me that there's something is growing at in with that argot. The Ragnellian EI, the, the example before this one, didn't show any signs of a lower pH after three months. Nine, over, nine out of ten times, that means that um, the plant is not growing. It doesn't do much, so it doesn't need a feed. And so therefore it stays in the pot, and that is kind of um, an explanation why the pH doesn't uh, drop in that case. In this case it did drop again. That could lay out once again was growing are probably working on some buds, but most of the times if they start growing or making a lot of new roots, I see that the calcium and the magnesium is dropping. Once again, that results in a lower pH. And these are my new forms. <laughs> I didn't use this one yet, but um, I have quite a lot of new orchids, so I made a new one. But as you can see, I have a, a lot of forms. And uh, like I said, for all my orchids, I uh, keep these notes and they are really interesting because uh, like I uh, explained just a few seconds ago now I know when an orchid is growing uh, most of the times you can see it if it makes a new growth you can see it's happening because obviously the new growth um, is there but if on top of the pot let's uh, I'm gonna slowly move now I don't want to make you dizzy but let's say this one uh, is also dropping the pH quite uh, quickly after my measurements and there's not much happening. It's now working on a new growth, but let's say it was all mature new growths. Still the pH was dropping and the ppms were quite low, so the argot was really feeding itself. It may be, and that's the biggest chance in that case, that it makes new roots, also in a pot. Uh, also then they do take a little bit more feed. In my experience, not as much as when they start to grow new growth or start making blooms, spikes. They talk, take up a, quite a lot of energy, but sometimes you may not see it on a plant itself, on top of the pot, but inside the pot the, the plant can be growing. So therefore you may have some different results now and again. So let's put those words into action. And I'm gonna demonstrate one of these guys, but yeah, which one? Like I said, I do all of them on a regular basis, as we uh, may know by now, but what one, which one we shall choose? Um, yeah, I don't know. Let's take this one. I will put it on the table and we're gonna check the reservoir and see what we will uh, find there also a nice time to uh, give a close look up a close check 
on your orchid and the first impression is is uh, very good we have nice growing root tips on these aerial roots we obviously have a spike with beautiful blooms actually we have two spikes one they are a little bit clustered together but we have this is an old spike it carries currently two blooms and yeah this is a hard coral color to film but it's a bit purple when it uh, when the flowers age but when it start just opens up it's a more a red color and then we have some new roots here so basically we have every sign of a health healthy orchid that's the first I like to watch when I do these close-ups when uh, a close-up when I do these measurements I'm sorry I try to get it out with the outer part with one hand and yes there we go and we have beautiful green roots we have also a black root as you can see with a new growing tip on it so that means that not, not always the roots are dead actually nine out of, out of ten cases I have dark roots who are still alive so I do not freak out <laughs> as much when I see uh, brown or dark roots in my opinion they most of the time are not dead you can see some black spots I'm not really sure why it happens but it happens but it does shoot out perfectly fine this root is quite a green still but it has some uh, darker spots there like I said I'm not sure why but nice shiny leaves thick leaves so this is uh, looks quite happy to me okay so we have now the reservoir we're gonna focus on this and as you can see it doesn't look a little bit like sand but it's the calcium from last time let's uh, let's um, measure this and I'm gonna grab my notes to see when I did this the last time it probably is not that long ago but first I'm going to take uh, my pH meter put it in the water of course stir it a little bit this needs a little bit of time to measure the pH and then the ppm's that one is just it's sharp a little bit quicker uh, i hope you can see this there it is 111 so that's okay that's perfect nothing wrong there it now says 6.7 <coughs> Six point seven six seven so seven point eight as you can see so this is okay I would say this uh, would note this probably as a six point eight at this time temperature also is nice to know it's twenty one and a half Celsius so it's beautiful. I don't like to go under the 18 degrees Celsius, especially in winter. I try to keep them as warm as possible. Then, then, and 18 is a uh, yeah my uh, my temperature to go for winter. But they like it a little bit warmer, so that's nice. So let's say uh, this one is at uh, 6.8. Okay, I'm gonna grab my notes and we will uh, compare our measurements and the last time I measured it and it's this one it's number 39 Mon Montreux, Montreux. I, I'm really not sure how to pronounce this it's from Hornbach but it's, uh, yeah, I, th I think it's called Montreux I hope I pronounced it right and last time that I did me measure this was on the 28th of March so we go down to 39 and we have a measurement there of 5.14 and I did give this calcium quite a lot we now had a measurement of 6.8 and it's um, 
the 30th of April when I'm filming this, so probably a month later. And like we saw earlier, this one was in bloom. It had um, even some buds to open. It had some roots growing, aerial roots, roots in a pot. So therefore it already started to drop again. Uh, this was to be expected, like I explained earlier on this orchid, this Phenoliopsis is growing, it's blooming, so it does take up quite a bit of feed. So therefore, I already have quite a bit of difference in, in, in uh, the uh, pH measurements, because I did give calcium. We now uh, already know that when I do that, it's around 7, 7.5, so let's say 7.5 to 6.8 yeah probably it was a little bit lower but at least 7 to 6.8 that's a little dis decrease in uh, pH wise and it was to be expected because it's a uh, very well growing and blooming orchid at this moment so in two months it probably will be around 6 pH and that means that I'm right on schedule because I didn't want to go uh, underneath the six the measurements of six pH in the pot so that is uh, that was a little bit of uh, action on the uh, materials that we talked about and the techniques that I uh, basically use the way I grow them I should say and um, yeah that is what I do with every single arc that's why you see all those names there but uh, it's a really uh, really beautiful way to get track of your orchids and to see what they are doing and when they are like to grow, when they like to bloom, etc. So, and she is back in her spot as you can see. And just to be uh, safe um, and clear, if this orchid was around pH-wise uh, between 6 and 6.5, I would include a little bit of calcium again. But it's now uh, uh, at 6.8 as we uh, saw so nothing wrong there it will take another two months and then I have to do my measurements anyway so therefore I leave it like this but if it's around 6.5 I just do a little bit of calcium so that would be a B and a C a, a bit of calcium and if it was around 6 it was only uh, would only be a C listed in my notes um, so I'd know the next time that I give it quite some bit of calcium so this is um, yeah, a first in, for me in uh, explaining the system that I am uh, growing in. Um, yeah, like I said, it's self-watering, but it's a customized uh, self-watering setup. And um, as you can see, I have quite a lot of blooms. I have a lot of aerial roots as well. Beautiful root tips also in the inside of the pots. Um, so I think I am um, in a uh, going in a quite a, a, a right direction, I guess, could say. Oh, there's a little bit more noise. I, I need to stay here, and um, I see a lot of uh, new growth. So, yeah, I think I have now have a system that works for me and for my orchids. I really personally enjoy um, measuring um, the uh, reservoirs and knowing what the orchids uh, do. Like I uh, explained, I now noticed, I can see on my results if a orchid is growing or not, if it's uh, feeding a lot uh, or not, etc. And uh, personally, I really like that uh, kind of information. Uh, it tells me more about the orchid, it tells me also um, if my feeding schedule is right, if they like it. And you can imagine with this amount of orchids, I'm talking about 260 at least in self-watering, I'm not giving them all their own feeding. Not, this one is not only getting calcium. If I feed calcium, they all get calcium. One exception is uh, my Miltoniopsis and my Masdevelias. The really um, ones that don't need that much feed, I, di I dilute it. I give them the same solution as this one. These guys only a little bit more diluted. So I do not mix up uh, again some feed. But just uh, like I said, I diluted with some pure oral, oral water, and um, that is um, yeah how I grow now. I must admit, of course, the greenhouse 
and the light that I have is really really helping I can make a climate here but I must admit well at this stage at this moment while I'm filming it's 60 percent and you may hear it on the roof it's raining outside that helps the uh, humidity going up but in most cases when the weather is quite nice I have it around 30 so for me way too low I'm working on it but my humidifier humidifier is not in yet it's still on um, to come so I need to wait for it but um, yeah so the, the conditions are not as perfect as I like yet but I must admit, um, I must admit, in my experience at least, when they have a reservoir, if you grow sim hydroponic or self-watering, they can take up a little bit uh, more the dry air because they have a, they can make up with the dryness by uh, because the water is always around them and they can drink. So if they um, lose quite some water. Uh, from the leaves because of the light and the, the heat the yeah the heat air um, they can drink a little bit more because there's always water waiting for them and especially when they have roots that are adjusted on this system of course so they can take up a little bit more uh, water like I said but I, still I try to keep uh, uh, my humidity around 60 65 that is uh, what they really like and I can see it on the aerial roots they start to grow again they have do get these nice beautiful growing tips if it's um, yeah too too long for a period of time to dry I will get these things they will dry up kind of sad so I need to work with uh, with this but like I said it's uh, on its way most of the feeding stuff that I give my orchids are um, are here and I have uh, some my MSU fertilizer is in this little uh, container there um, I will uh, make a video about uh, what I give my um, my plants. You will see some brands here. I'm a big fan of the Biobis. I have quite a lot of different um, feedings from them, fertilizer I should say. Um, but like I said, um, and especially the Calmac is fantastic. They, it's really easy uh, for the plants to take up all the calcium uh, from, uh, from this brand. But I'm going to make a separate video for this if you are uh, interested. Uh, but in generally speaking in the winter I give them less ppms per uh, per, per uh, watering around 50 to 80 in summer if they uh, really start to grow again or in spring as you could say I give them around 100 till 150 parts per million so that, that is what they get now in generally speaking um, what I do is and you may have seen you may probably have these your own if you don't you really should uh, buy these guys a parts per million meter TDS meter parts per million and a pH meter so what I do um, with my argus is let's say I have a pot with an inner pot I take the argus out and I do measure it plant by plant measure the, the pH and I note, uh, take notes of the reading I get and then I do also uh, take a measurement of the parts per million. If the, like we talked about, the pH is a little bit too low, I give some um, garden lime, some calcium, magnesium solution, this one. But if the parts per million are too high and let's say I will not go uh, above 200 parts per million in my reservoir because most of the times uh, if I try to, to test it as well if I have 200 in, a, in, in the, my reservoir inside the pot is sometimes um, uh, even more well it's, it's most of the times it's even more uh, it's most of the times even double so if I two, have 200 in, in the reservoir I probably have 200 parts per million at least inside the pot of the orchid. I did that, uh, tried it to test it with um, the methods of uh, bread from bread orchids. You, um, basically is you soak the pot, so you fill it up with, uh, with clean RO water, you let it sit for at least half an hour, you take your orchid out and the last drips of water that will come out, you um, catch them in a cup for example, like, uh, like this, 
you know, so those last drops of water will get in there and then you measure those drops and it will give you a reading and I was quite surprised how high it was I was uh, back in the days it was uh, still flushing but even then it was quite high but now I know if uh, uh, if I'm not going over uh, the 200 most of the times I start flushing if needed if they have around 150 parts per million I don't really want to go over that but um, especially not 200 is the limit if they over 200 I'm really gonna flush them I'm not gonna soak them I just give them a flush with clean oral water and then we are back at a nice schedule again so that is something to keep in mind also it gives quite some um, nice information because if you for example go to the parts per million if let's say if I give my orchids 100 parts per million per watering and in let's say in a month or two I measure my pot with a plant doesn't matter which plant and that plant has about 150 or even more parts per million in there that tells you something in, in at least in my opinion that tells me that the orchid at that moment isn't taking or basically not taking any feed because it's we, ha we basically have a build-up I put 100 in 100 again so it should stay at 100 basically if the orchid are, is um, drinking and eating but if you put in more and more and the PPM, PPMs parts per million do rise on a certain level that means that your orchid isn't taking much feed or maybe not, not nothing at the moment well then is the question why doesn't oops why doesn't take does that orchid take its feed well well I don't have an answer because we don't know what's happening with the orchid maybe it has some pests maybe it's really unhappy maybe you give it too much light maybe it is rotting and you didn't see it or um, yet uh, it could be all kinds of different things but that is a uh, a kind of alarm bell for me I see as soon as I see that happening if I see build-ups that shouldn't be there I know there's something wrong with the orchid could be the pH maybe it's the pH is too low or the roots are going why are those roots going does it does it like the media do we have too much air gaps in for example etc so I think you get the point that is the beautiful thing if you keep measuring your pots if you keep notes you can compare and you will see things happening and I think that is very important and that's why I t told you in the beginning of this video this is probably for me personally the most important video I can film I can make because I have now a bit of experience I'm talking about in this growing this setup this custom setup I'm growing uh, I'm doing this for uh, one and a half years like I said so I'm now confident enough to share this I was um, trying to film uh, my orchids earlier on but I didn't I wasn't confident enough because there were things going wrong I was um, uh, my orchids not all did uh, bloom very, very well didn't have these showy bloom spikes etc I didn't have those beautiful roots coming out so therefore I thought no it's not the time yet there I need to I need to know what's going on before I start filming this and uh, also I wanted to share this for just for you who uh, for you guys who are interested in it and uh, because I learned so much from YouTube that it helped me really really so so much that I really thought yeah I, someday I need to do something back if you uh, know what I mean so therefore I hope I am doing this right now this may hopefully be a start for me to doing something back for all you guys who helped me out there and I really mean it I seriously mean it I have my orchids I, I did grow my collection it did get so big because I was confident enough that I can grow them, that I can rebloom my vendas. For years I couldn't rebloom them. I didn't know what I doing was doing wrong. Now I have a setup. I have them in glass phases. I know what I'm doing. I and we can clearly clearly see see now that I have four out of five vendas in bloom, etc. So yeah, it's really really helped me. And uh, like I said, uh, this is really my 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 uh, basically I'm saying a thank you for every uh, information you put out there 
we we may not have the same system. I know that, but still, if you're f taking the time to make your videos, if you're taking the time to share information, a big thumbs up because we can help each other so much and just res yeah respect our way of growing. Just start conversations, start to discuss our way of growing. You probably may have uh, seen a lot of videos from uh, Nina from Ninja Arcade or the Arcade uh, Room. They also have self-watering going on, same with hydroponic, but they also do it differently. And I'm not saying this is the way, this is just my way and I really like to share it with you guys. And uh, like Ninja Nina from Ninja Arcade does it, uh, if I'm correct, she flosses quite, quite often and her plants are looking beautiful. Nothing wrong there and it really is a system that suits her. You can see it, you can hear it in her voice, <laughs> it's beautiful. So therefore, once again, thank you all uh, for sharing your information. Thank you for being here. I really hope this is helpful and uh, I probably did forget some things to mention. I always have that when my video is up, I think, oh, I should have mentioned that, but um, we, have a, uh, we have more videos to come. So uh, if there are any questions, please leave them uh, behind in the comment section or suggestions, or maybe you want to say something about uh, your way of growing. Please feel free, leave it there, and we can read it, we can share there as well. Okay, this is probably a very long video, but this one is, like I said, so, so important. So therefore, I really took my time. Um, for now, thank you guys for watching and for um, giving me this uh, room, giving me the time to explain my system again. And um, I hope it's helpful, and um, I really hope to see you at one of my next uh, videos. Bye-bye.